Another absolute big one on the spark shed. Notice that the bait was a lot smaller. Downsized, another four pounder. That's fun stuff. Hey YouTube, welcome back to Locked In Anglers. We're here to break down the best finesse technique that you can use in and around the spawn for to catch big bass at this time of year. So as those fish are starting to fan out, make beds, pair up and get ready for the spawn, any sort of environmental changes in that time of year can be pretty difficult to follow the fish along as they move up, pull off the beds, move up, pull off the beds. And it can be a really frustrating time to catch fish this time of year, but there's a couple techniques in particular that can really help you put more fish in the boat and put those big females in the boat that are up there ready to spawn, but not ready to commit all the way. There's one technique in particular and that is the baby swim bait. The baby swim bait, whether you're throwing a 2.8 Kitek, a Mega Bass Spark Shad, the little three inch, either of those fantastic approaches this time of year when those smallmouth aren't locked on the beds, but they're trying to get in that mood, that bait can pick up absolute giants, no matter if it's a large mouth, small mouth, spotted bass, or any of the above. They will fall for that little baby swim bait 90% of the time and you can know with confidence that you're either around fish or you're not So for me the approach is really simple. I either I stick to three main heads this time of year and those are really dictated by how deep the water is that I'm fishing So if I'm fishing relatively shallow water in that zero to eight feet I'm using the Picasso tungsten ball head jig paired with either a 2.8 Kitek or the three inch Spark Shad. Both of these are really good presentations for covering a ton of water, getting that bait in the strike zone, and being a small enough presentation for a fish that's not looking to feed up a lot, but is, a, but is aggressive enough to at least move something off a of bed or move something out of the area that it's trying to spawn. That three inch size seems to be that perfect size that they actually eat that entire bait and give you the ability to set the hook and drive a hook deep into their mouth before they spit it back out. If I'm going a little bit deeper, I'm gonna to go to the Dirty Jigs Matt Stefan Guppy Head. This, I usually run in the three eighths and one aught size if I'm running with those smaller swim baits. And same presentation, you're just chucking and winding, throwing it out there, letting it hit the bottom, and then cranking it up about a foot or so and just slow rolling it across anywhere that you think is a spawning flat or anywhere where a small mouth, large mouth, or spot may pull up to spawn this time of year. And if you're having a difficulty with the hookups with that, because this time of year, I mean, it's it's pretty, it's pretty typical that the fish aren't trying to feed, but they're just trying to move something off their bed or off the area that they're trying to spawn. One of the heads that I also rely on this time of year, it's a bit more of a sneaky approach, but it's the Picasso line through head. You can see it's a screw lock. You screw it into the front of the bait. Rather, it's a rather simple approach, but you're basically gonna push it straight in there and screw that head in until it's flush with the bait and then run a line through to a treble hook. So you can ha put that treble hook a little bit farther back than a normal jig, hood would, jig hook will sit without having the jig hook interfere with the, the tail. And this time of year when the fish are just barely nipping at the bait, that treble hook can help those fish hook themselves without you having to impart any action on the bait. And it can help you convert more fish than you typically would this time of year. So with the small swim bait, the gear you use is really important to being able to fish the bait effectively. As you're trying to cover a ton of water, having the gear that will give you the opportunity to get your bait out there as far as possible will allow you to get that, get your bait in front of as many fish and be able to convert those fish into bass in the boat significantly more than if you were just using traditional spinning gear. So the first that I use is I use a G Loomis 852 jig and worm rod. This is a medium action seven foot one spinning rod and 
it has a little bit more of a backbone to be able to really stick those fish that are really far away from the boat. And I tend to use that bait anytime I'm using either the Matt Stefan guppy head or especially the Picasso tungsten ball head because they have slightly stouter hooks and at the end of a really long cast, even if you're running the braid de floral that we normally run with about 10, 8 to 10 pound fluorocarbon, you still need to have that ability to drive that hook deep enough in that fish that's pretty far away to be able to convert on those bites when you get them. For the more subtle approach where we're more where we're running either the line through or we are running that Matt Stefan head on about six pound in really clear, really finesse situations, that's the situation where I go to the G Loomis 901. This is a seven foot six medium light action rod and it is an absolute noodle. But because it's so long, you can throw these tiny little swim baits on tiny little heads 30, 40 yards out across these massive spawning flats to be able to get your bait in front of the most amount of fish possible, which is really is the key this time of year. So to break down the, the technique, it's, very, it's fairly simple. It's basically, you throw the bait out there as far as you can, you let it hit the bottom, you give it a couple quick reel pops just to get it up off the bottom so it's about 6 to 12 inches off the bottom and it's a steady retrieve. Nothing fancy, just a steady retrieve all the way back to the boat. You, you, and if you get a bit, it's, it's nothing fancy, it's just lean into it, let the hook do its work and drive that hook home and reel that fish straight into the boat. The main deal with this technique this time of year is timing. Timing is everything with this bait because it has a very short window where it works. And when it's, when it's working, you might as well not be throwing anything else because this will hands down catch you the most amount of fish that you possibly could be catching in these certain situations. So the situation I'm talking about is that time of year when those fish, they pull up and for a variety of environmental reasons, whether it's rising water, a cold front, a windstorm, some sort of pressure front. If those fish move up, start fanning and making beds, and then have to pull off because the weather's not conducive for them to spawn, that's when this technique flourishes. Because those fish are up shallow, they're trying to get the spawning action started, they can't seem to commit, and they're just in a generally agitated state of mind where they don't want to eat anything, and the only thing that, that I found that really appeals to them is that really small swim bait. That small swim bait is small enough where they'll actually grab it and get enough of the bait where you can actually get a hook in them. Most time, most of this time of year, if you're throwing a bigger swim bait, a crank bait, um, a jig, any sort of thing, you're still getting bites, but you're just missing so many fish because they're just short striking, striking it, hitting it with their mouth closed, barely picking it up or picking it up and moving it off where, where their bed's going to be or in the area that they think they're going to spawn. And it's just not an efficient time of year to fish most of your larger size baits. And that's where that three inch size bait or even that 3.3 inch size bait is absolutely imperative to be using. So for me, I always start with the Mega Bass Spark Shad. The Spark Shad, the spark shad is just the most universal small swim bait because it's incredibly subtle. It has a very short action, a really wide wobble, and it is, honestly, it's as close to a do-nothing bait as you can possibly get. And the fish just absolutely love it. Typically, I either fish this blackback shad your albino color, which is a, a light white with a blue top, or the IU color if I'm on a perch fishery. Either of these three are very successful colors that match a lot of the forage that pose the biggest threat to smallmouth, largemouth, and spotted bass as they're getting ready to spawn. If I'm finding that the bite's going really well, I'll immediately switch to a 2.8 or a 3.3 Kitek either in kind of the rainbow shad color, the smallmouth magic, or the sun gill color. Each of these represent a major predator 
for spawning fish this time of year. But the Kitek has a lot wider of action, it's a lot more aggressive, and it allows you to fish it a lot faster and to elicit the same sort of strike, but put yourself in the most optimal situation to target the most active of these fish that are in these pr this pretty negative mood. All of these baits work incredibly well in sunny conditions, windy conditions, cloudy conditions, or even in like true post-frontal tough fishing conditions. The subtlety of the bait, the unassuming nature of the fact of its landing in the water, being very quiet, having a very quiet entry, and just a subtle presentation moving past these fish allows you to convert on a lot of these fish that just won't bite anything else this time of year. There's, there's days that I've put handfuls, 40, 50, 60 fish in the boat with this swim bait because they're just simply not seeing a lure that's conducive to the time of year and their current state of mind to allow them to really feed on it opportunistically in the same way that you can have with any of these smaller swim baits. Typically this time of year, I shy away from the underspins the Okashira head, anything that allows or that creates an extra flash, I try to keep it as subtle as possible. Stick to your six pound, eight pound, and ten pound Sunline Sniper FC fluorocarbon, and I always run a braid a leader. Usually the leader is about a ten foot leader, so I have an optimal optimal amount of leader ahead of the bait to keep the subtlety of the presentation. But with these specialized rods, you can get that bait really far out there. And if you're getting bit at the very end of your cast, or if they eat it on the fall, you have to have that braid to floor up to have enough power to drive that hook home and get that fish in the boat. Once I, once I hook the fish and I really make sure that that bait's driven, I back that drag off, let that fish tire itself out, and it becomes an easy net job by the time it gets to the boat. I use this technique all over the place. I've used it all over the country, from the west coast to the east coast to the deep south. All of these areas have the same core nature of really having these fish that are targeted in a heavy pressure situation where they're up and around beds. People are seeing them, making lots of casts at them. These small presentations really get the job done when nothing else will. I hope you guys have, are able to take something away from this to be able to put a couple more fish in the boat. This technique flat out gets them when nothing else will. So worst case scenario, tie it on a drop shot rod, tie it on your Senko rod when you've got nothing else to lose. If you have that bait tied on and you're around the fish, they're gonna bite it. And it's a great way to know if you're around them or if you're not. And if they're not biting, if they're not there, get out of there and keep checking that bait at another spawning flat and you'll put more and more fish in the boat, guaranteed. Thanks for coming along guys. See you in the next one.